Hello, this is Pastor Stephen Anderson from Faithful Word Baptist Church in Tempe, Arizona, here to teach you the Greek alphabet, which is going to be the first step in learning how to speak and read Greek. Now, Greek has a completely different alphabet from English, but the good news is that Greek is a very phonetic language, meaning that once you learn the alphabet, things are going to be spelled exactly how they sound. And so once you memorize these 24 letters, it's going to be pretty easy for you to read Greek. It's, it's not really that hard at all. Now, the pronunciation that I'm going to be teaching you is modern Greek pronunciation. Even if you're learning Biblical Greek, it makes way more sense to learn the modern Greek pronunciation. If you go to Bible college or seminary or any of these type of places, they're not going to teach you modern Greek pronunciation. They're going to teach you a reconstructed pronunciation of what scholars think it was pronounced like thousands of years ago. But of course, there's no tape recorder to show us exactly what it sounded like back then. They can speculate and make an educated guess, but there's really no way of knowing whether or not the reconstructed pronunciation is even right. Whereas with modern Greek pronunciation, you can actually learn how to pronounce words in a way that is correct and will be understood by Greek people. Uh, obviously, the Bible is not written in modern Greek. It's written in an older dialect known as Koine Greek. But that being said, it's not so different that you cannot communicate with modern Greek speakers using Koine Greek and be understood. They are different dialects, but they are the same language, and they are very similar, in fact. They have differences, but they also have a lot of similarities. And so it would make more sense, if you're going to learn Biblical Greek, to learn the modern pronunciation, because that will allow you to communicate with modern-day Greek speakers. And not only that, but the reconstructed pronunciation is, is really an American thing in a lot of ways. Because if you were to go to Greece, for example, or, or talk to people who are Greek, even when they study Biblical New Testament Greek, or even when they study Classical Greek, going back even further than that, they use the modern pronunciation. They don't use the reconstructed pronunciation. In fact, Greek people will mock and make fun of the American, you know, reconstructed uh, pronunciation and say that it's like, you know, Plato in, in cowboy boots and that it just sounds American. It just doesn't sound Greek. So it makes more sense to learn the uh, legitimate modern Greek pronunciation. Also, you can get an audio Bible of the New Testament in Greek being read uh, by a modern Greek speaker, and so you wouldn't be able to use that tool uh, if you're on uh, the, the reconstructed pronunciation. I'll talk more about that in the next video about some resources and tools that you can use to help you learn Greek. But let's get started with the alphabet. The first letter of the Greek alphabet is the letter alpha. And basically, it's made by taking your pen and starting at the top at this little line right here, and then you come around and make a loop, and then just like that. Now, the best way to learn the alphabet is to grab a piece of paper and a pen as you're watching this video and actually just write out a row of 20 of each letter. As I'm explaining these to you and talking to you about the letters, just write them down. That's the best way to learn it. Okay, this letter is called alpha, and alpha makes an ah sound, okay? So after the letter alpha is going to be the letter vita, vita. And of course, if you're used to the Americanized pronunciation or the reconstructed pronunciation, you, you would know this as beta. But it's actually pronounced vita, and it makes a v sound, like a v, and vita is basically just like a capital B, but it has this little tail going down below it, Vita. So it goes Alpha, Vita. Now let me stop at this point and explain to you that the letters that I'm teaching you here are all lowercase letters. Even though this looks like an uppercase B, uh, this is actually a lowercase Vita. And I would highly recommend that you learn the lowercase letters first in Greek. There is an uppercase Greek alphabet, but honestly, if you read Greek, or if you read a Greek New Testament, the uppercase letters are used very seldom, because they don't start a sentence with a capital letter, for example. The only time you see the capitals is, is on proper names, and you know, a few other things, but honestly, the lowercase is way more important uh, when you're learning Greek. So I would learn the uppercase later, you don't really need it right now. The main thing to learn is the lowercase letters. So, so far we've got two letters. We've got alpha and vita right there. And then the third letter is going to be gamma, gamma. And gamma is similar to a lowercase English Y, but it's got that little loop 
and it's basically symmetrical from one side to the other. So this is the letter gamma. So alpha, vita, gamma. And then after gamma is delta. Now delta looks similar to an English D, but it has this curvy thing going on. Uh, to me, it kind of looks like one of those bombs, you know, the little black round bomb with the wick coming out of it. So this letter is delta, and it is basically pronounced like the TH in the word the, okay? Uh, if you speak Spanish, you're probably used to pronouncing the Ds in this way. Uh, but this is delta, delta. So alpha, vita, gamma, delta. All right, and then after delta, we've got epsilon. And epsilon looks very similar to an English E, just two little loops like that. That's the lowercase epsilon. And epsilon makes the E eh sound. Now remember, the Greek alphabet, the first sound of the name of the letter tells you what sound that letter makes. So alpha says A, ah, vita says V, gamma says G, delta says Th, and then epsilon says E. Eh. E, E, Epsilon. Now, the good thing about these vowels is that they only make one sound. Now, we'll talk a little bit later about combining vowels into diphthongs, but Epsilon basically just makes one type of a sound. It's not like in English where we have these dramatically different sounds, E, E, E. Uh, it just makes an E as an Epsilon. Sometimes it'll be longer, like E, E, E. I mean, but it's not that big of a difference. So, after epsilon is the letter zeta. And zeta has a little loop thing at the top, and then it swings out like that and comes back. So it, it kind of looks like a C, but it's got these other decorations on it. So again, the zeta, you just start at the top, make a little loop, and then make a big giant loop, and then come back like that. That is zeta, okay? Then after zeta, you have the letter eta. Now, eta is basically like an English lowercase n, but then the front just comes down a little bit further, okay? So it's like you're writing an English lowercase n, but then you just come down a little bit further. This letter is pronounced eta. So we have zeta, and then we have eta. Zeta says z, and eta makes an e sound. This is a vowel that makes an e sound, eta. And then after eta, you have theta. Theta is basically just an oval with a line across it. And you probably remember this from math. In math, uh, you called this theta, using an American uh, pronunciation. But this letter in Greek is the letter theta, and it makes a th sound. Now, the difference between this and delta is that delta makes the th sound like in the word the, delta. Whereas theta makes the sound as in the word thick the harder th sound, thick, theta, all right? Then after theta, you have the letter yota, which yota is just like a lowercase i that you don't dot, okay? That's yota, just like an English lowercase i, except you're not going to be dotting it. You just make a line like that, lowercase. That's yota. And then after yota, you have kappa. Now, The lowercase kappa basically looks like you took an English capital K and just shrunk it down, okay? And I hope you're writing these down as we go and practicing these. But it basically is just like the uppercase K in English, except you're just writing it like half the height because it's lowercase. So this is kappa, all right? And then after kappa, you have the letter lambda. And lambda basically looks like this. So it curves down, and then it has these two legs at the bottom. So let me just talk about these three letters for a moment. Yoda, Kappa, Lambda. Now, Yota, if we were to pronounce it in slow motion, would be Iota, Iota. And it makes an E sound because it starts on an E, Iota, Yota. So that one is a little tricky, but Yota makes an E sound. It makes the identical sound as the letter eta that we saw earlier. Kappa makes a hard k sound, and then lambda makes the l sound. So these are not that different.
from I, K, and L in English. Yota, Kappa, Lambda. And then after Lambda, we have the letter Mi. Mi. Now, Mi basically looks like a lowercase u in English, but then it just has this extra long leg at the front added on, okay? So basically, you start out by making a, a straight line like that, and then you just kind of turn it into a little lowercase u alongside of it. And that is the letter me. Now, if you look really closely at this letter, it sort of resembles an M in a way. When you look at it, it's just kind of a, a warped M. But the way that I like to remember it is just as a lowercase u with this other extra long leg on the left side. And this letter is called me. All right. Now, the next letter is pretty tricky. It is called knee. Okay. So we have me and knee. Knee looks just like an English lowercase v, okay? So when you're reading something in Greek and you see this letter, you're going to want to pronounce it like a v sound. But it doesn't make a v sound. It makes an n sound. This is knee, knee. So you got to get used to pronouncing this as an n, knee. This letter makes knee. After me and knee, we have xi. Xi is basically the x sound. And this one, you start out with a little loop at the top, then you make two big loops, and then you come back like this. So it's almost like a backwards three, okay? But it has some other little frills going on here. So it does resemble a backwards three. So you start out by making a little loop at the top, and then you loop down, and then another loop in the middle, and then you come back at the bottom. Now this letter was actually pretty easy for me to learn because when I was a child, and we did cursive handwriting in elementary school, this is what they taught us as an uppercase X, okay? I, I know I've talked to other people who learned a different uppercase X when they were doing English cursive handwriting, but for some reason this is what they taught us, so this was pretty easy for me to learn because I learned it as a child in school. But anyway, this is XI. XI makes the X sound. So we have me, ni, XI. The next letter is Omicron. Omicron is identical to our English lowercase o, and it makes an o sound, Omicron. Now, where Omicron gets its name is uh, o, obviously, and then micron. Micron means small in Greek. So this is basically a little o, o micron, Omicron, okay? Now, you've probably heard of the last letter of the Greek alphabet, which is omega. Well, mega means big or large. So basically what you have in Greek is the little o, omicron, and the big o, omega, okay? And they both make the same sound in modern Greek, which is an o sound, okay? So this is omicron, just like a lowercase o. After omicron, we have the letter p. You probably, again, learned this in math as pi, but in Greek it's pronounced p, okay? Let me draw it for you nice and big here. P. Okay, so you probably notice, and I'm going to get to this in a minute when I teach you how to memorize these, because at the end of the video, I'm going to teach you how to memorize the order. Uh, I have a few little tricks for how I memorize it. But you probably notice that the order of the letters resembles the order of the English letters, because we have, you know, lambda, mi, ni, that's pretty similar to like L, M, N, okay, and then O, P, we have Omicron, P. So what do you expect to come next? If we've got Omicron, and then we've got P, we're expecting an R next, right? Okay. Well, the next letter is called Rho. Now, I can't roll my R's. You know, you probably can't either if you're an American uh, as I am. But, you know, a lot of Americans can roll their R's pretty well, especially if you've learned Spanish at a young age. But I am unable to roll my R's, so I just say Rho. I can't really do a fancy uh, sounding R. But the Rho is a little bit tricky because it looks an awful lot like a lowercase p in English, right? But you can't let that confuse you because remember, this is p, okay? So you don't want to confuse these two things because the p is this symbol right here, okay? This is rho. So you don't want to get those two mixed up. Whenever you see this when you're reading Greek, you need to get used to pronouncing this as an r sound and not as a P sound. And just keep in mind what the P looks like. Remember it from math, okay? So this is Rho, and that is an R sound in Greek. The next letter is gonna be the S sound, which is Sigma. 
And sigma is basically just a circle with a little line sticking out to the right like that. So this letter is sigma. So we have P rho sigma, and then after sigma we have taf. Now taf, taf looks like a capital T, but just shrunken down to half size because it's a lowercase letter. So this letter TOF makes the T sound. So these are both pretty easy. Sigma, TOF. And then after TOF, we have the letter Y. Now Y looks very similar to an English U. It's a little bit fancier on the edges. But again, this is Y. And Y makes an E sound. So keep in mind, so far we've learned three letters that all make the same sound in modern Greek. Uh, one of them was Ita makes an E sound, right? Yota makes an E sound. And then also Y makes an E sound. So it's great. Once you learn these three letters, you, you know that they all make the same sound. E. All right? So it's pretty easy. After Y, we have the letter Phi. Okay? Now this is one that we don't have in English, but it's basically the F sound or the PH sound. Uh, it's just a circle with a, with a line through it coming down. So this letter is phi. Then after phi, we have chi, okay? And this is basically like the ch in German. If you know how to speak German, the ch is a ch. It's, it's a hard breathing. It's like an h, but just a harder h. He, he. Just move more air, breathe, and say he. He. It's kind of like a cross between a K and an H. Think about something halfway between a K and an H. He. And the way you make he is sort of like an X, okay, but it kind of goes below the line. You know, so if this were the line, you know, it would kind of go below the line a little bit, okay? So that letter is he. So again, we have phi, all right, and then we have he. He, he, okay? He, he. So we have phi, he, and then we have another one that you're probably not going to be used to, which is psi. Now, psi is pretty much like an y with a line coming right down through the middle of it. And psi is our ps sound, okay? You know, we have a lot of words in English that start with ps, but we, we usually don't. Uh, pronounce the P, right? For example, well, the book of Psalms, we don't call it Psalms, we just call it Psalms. Uh, psychologist, we would not pronounce the P. But in Greek, they do have that PS sound. And this will often be at the beginning of a word in Greek. You know, for example, we say in English someone's psyche. Well, psyche comes from the Greek word psyche, psyche. And uh, they do pronounce that P-S at the beginning of the word psi Okay, so this right here is the psi. And a trick for remembering this one is, if you remember, there's that Greek false god called Poseidon. And he's got that trident in his hand, right? Well, this basically looks a lot like a trident, doesn't it? And so maybe that'll help you. Poseidon uh, is carrying a thing that looks like this, and this is a psi. Another way that, that I uh, like to remember it is, if you remember, there's a Japanese weapon known as tsai. Now, that starts with a T-S, but that kind of helps me remember that this is a P-S. C, okay? And then, of course, the last letter is a very famous letter that everyone's heard of, but you may not be very familiar with the symbol of it, though. Even though you've heard it a lot, omega, you probably don't know the symbol. Basically, is like a rounded W. Okay, so the lowercase omega is like a rounded W. So there you go, that's all the letters. So now I'm going to write them all out in a row, and I'm going to teach you how to remember the order that they come in. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to write out the first five, because I like to memorize these in groups, okay, and it's easier to learn that way if you break down the 24 letters into smaller groups. So first of all, let's just do the first five, okay, which are alpha, vita, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Alpha, Vita, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon. Now the reason I like to group these five together is because these resemble the A, the B, 
And then if you skip gamma, the D and the E of the English alphabet. So these five don't really look that different from the first five letters of the English alphabet. So it's pretty easy to get your bearings and to remember these five. Alpha, Vita, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon. So I would just learn those five and just memorize those five. Alpha, Vita, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon. Okay? Then once you get those five down, I like to group the next three into a group. Okay? And if you remember, the next three are going to be Zeta, Eta, and Theta. Now you can probably guess why I like to group these three, but it's because they rhyme. So if I can remember Alpha, Vita, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, and then I have the three that rhyme. Zeta, Eta, Theta. Alright, so that's pretty easy to remember, right? Alpha, Vita, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon, Zeta, Eta, Theta, and then after Theta, I like to think of the next three as a group also, which are Yoda, Kappa, and Lambda. Alright? And the reason I group Yoda, Kappa, and Lambda is because they're similar to English letters I, K, and L. Our alphabet goes I, J, K, L. So just forget the J and you've got Yoda, Kappa, Lambda. So Alpha, Vita, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon. Zeta, Eta, Theta is a nice little triplet. Then you've got Yoda, Kappa, Lambda. And then the next group that I like to do is Mi, Ni, Xi, Omicron, P. And again, this makes a nice little rhyme when you do this. Mi, Ni, Xi, Omicron, P. Mi, Ni, Xi, Omicron, P. So you can use that rhyme to learn these five as a little group. Mi, Ni, Xi, Omicron, P. And then after P, of course, we have an R sound is what we're looking for. So the next group I like to remember is Rho, Sigma, Toph, Epsilon. And the reason I like these four together like this is because in English it goes R, S, T, U, right? And the Epsilon, even though it makes an E sound, it looks a lot like a U when you write it out. So it's pretty easy to remember the order here. R, S, T, U in English, Rho, Sigma, Toph, Epsilon, okay? So that's the next four. Then I like to do a triplet of the three kind of strange letters in Greek, the three that are probably the most unfamiliar to us. I like to put them together because they all rhyme as well. And if you remember those, they are phi, he, psi, all right? And then, of course, omega. You're not going to forget that because it's the last letter. Jesus said, I'm Alpha and Omega. It's pretty easy to remember Omega as being the last letter, okay? So again, remember how we have these grouped. Alpha, Vita, Gamma, Delta, Epsilon. Those five are easy to remember. They're similar to the first five English letters. Then we got our triple here, Zeta, Eta, Theta. And then we've got Yota, Kappa, Lambda. And then another nice rhyme of these five, Mi, Ni, Xi, Omicron, P. Then we have the next group of four, Rho, Sigma, Taf, Epsilon. Then we have the three kind of strange symbols, which are Phi, He, and Psi. And then we have Omega, all right? So I would recommend you memorizing the Greek alphabet if you have any interest in learning Greek, because this is where it all begins. You know, you have to learn how to pronounce these letters. And once you learn how to pronounce these letters, you're going to be able to read the, the Greek language, whereas if you don't learn the alphabet, I mean, you're going to look at it and it's going to look like complete gibberish to you. You're not going to uh, know what you're looking for. And I would recommend memorizing it in these groups. So maybe today your goal could be to just learn these five, and then maybe the next day you could try to learn the three, and then the next day learn three more. And uh, if it's hard for you, you can do it over the course of like a week like that. Otherwise, if you want to be ambitious about it, you might as well just learn the whole thing in one day. It's, it's definitely possible, okay? Now, before I uh, end the video, learning the alphabet has is, is gotten you about 90% of the way to being able to read a uh, Greek Bible or read anything that you want in Greek uh, as far as just pronouncing the words. Obviously, you don't know what the words mean, but at least this will help you be able to pronounce the words. So the next step is going to be to learn a few letter combinations. Now, I'm not going to sit here and teach you uh, every combination of letters that could possibly occur in Greek that has a unique sound. You know, the best way to learn how to pronounce stuff is to get a Greek New Testament in audio version. 
also just to uh, get a Greek learning course. Like for example, Pimsler does a Greek audio learning course that's really good. And it's all audio, so it's all done just by listening. So that, that's going to help you pronounce things the, the best, is obviously just learning to n listen to native speakers. Uh, a native speaker reading the Greek Bible, or a native speaker teaching you through the Pimsleur course. Uh, that's going to give you all the nuances and all the different tricky things, rather than trying to memorize a bunch of rules, in my opinion. But there are a few basic letter combinations that you need in addition to knowing the Greek alphabet if you're going to be able to read Greek, okay? So let me show you these diphthongs or combinations of two vowels that you're going to need to know. First of all, there's a group of them that, that ends in yota, okay? So first of all, we've got alpha, yota, okay? And then we've got uh, epsilon, yota. Then we've got omicron, yota. And then we've got Ypsilon, Yota, all right? So we've got these combinations right here. Now here's the good news. All three of these make the same sound. And they basically make an E sound. And then this one right here, the Alpha Yota, makes the sound of Epsilon, okay? So when we come across Alpha Yota, that combination of two letters, you know, it looks like an A and an I. That's going to be pronounced A or E like Epsilon, okay? So that's pretty easy. And then just remember anything else other than the Alpha Yota, anything else ending in Yota, just pronounce it like a Yota. So this is E, this is E, this is E. All of it's E, okay? And uh, again, we're using modern pronunciation, okay? So that's these diphthongs here that end in E. Now, another couple of diphthongs that you need to learn is basically alpha, epsilon, and epsilon, epsilon, okay? These are a little bit tricky because the alpha, epsilon, is basically pronounced like av or off, okay? So when we come to this, we're either going to pronounce it av or off, and then this one, is going to be ev or f, all right? So we got ev or f, all right? So these two are a little tricky. So in addition to memorizing the 24 letters, in addition to memorizing those four other diphthongs that end in yota, you need to learn this is av or off, and this is ev or f, okay? And then there's one more that's pretty important. And again, I'm not teaching you everything, but I'm teaching you like 99% of what you need. The rest of it you can just pick up as you go, in my opinion. Uh, the other one that you're going to need is just this one right here, which is the Omicron Epsilon, and that's just pronounced uh, oo, oo. That makes your oo sound, okay? So basically, uh, it's not a whole lot of diphthongs that you have to learn in Greek. Basically this one, what's this one say again? A or E, it's just like an Epsilon. Whenever you see this, just think of it as Epsilon, and then of course, We've got the triplicate here. All three of these make the same E sound, E, E, E. And if you remember, this makes E, uh, this makes E, and this makes E. So basically you have six different vowel and vowel combinations that all make the E sound. So here's a tip, when you're reading in Greek, if you don't know what sound something makes, just if you guess E, well, you're probably right, that's the most common sound, okay? So those all say E. And then you've got your two here, av, off, or ev, f, all right? And then you've got this one that says oo. And that's it. So if you've learned the whole Greek alphabet, and if you've learned all those diphthongs, you're pretty much ready to read Greek. And the great thing about reading uh, the Greek New Testament is that it has these accent marks. So it makes it really easy to know where to put the accent on which syllable, and we'll talk more about that later. But in the next video, I basically just want to give you some resources for learning Greek. You know, you've learned the alphabet. Hopefully you were writing it down as you watched the video because writing these out 20, 30 times and chanting them over and over again is the best way to learn the Greek alphabet, in my opinion. But once you've le learned the Greek alphabet, you know, where do you go next to learn more? Well, uh, I'm going to give you some resources in the next video that will help you uh, as you're learning Greek. Uh, if you didn't already watch the introduction video 
that explains why I'm even teaching this and why you should even think about learning Greek or if you should even learn and think about learning Greek, you know, go ahead and watch the introduction video. Otherwise, you can um, continue on to the next video if you like and I'll give you some resources for learning Greek.